morning all. It'll be Christmas soon, and I'm thinking about gifts. Not for other people, for me. Now, I do quite like battery chargers, but I'm not thinking of one of these rubbishy plug-in type things. I'm thinking about this. It's the SkyRC MC3000 Multi-Chemistry Universal Battery Charger and Analyzer. Now, this is a pretty serious looking bit of kit. Um, this has a very uh, detailed display of things like voltage, current and uh, capacity, but also Bluetooth and uh, an app is available which you can put on your phone or tablet, giving you even more information, nice graphical interface and lots of data, including graphs. Uh, the chemistry types are nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, nickel zinc, Eneloop, they've singled Eneloop out for some reason, even though it is nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, uh, li io 4.35, that's the uh, voltage that you can take those things to, and LIFEPO4, lithium ion phosphate. Uh, it is only for cylindrical cells, um, but you can see there are quite a large number of different cylindrical cells it can take, um, including the uh, nickel metal hydrides and nickads in the A, C and D sizes, and then all the various different sizes of uh, lithium ion. And uh, here's some specification, and my favourite one is the top one here. It runs off DC 11 to 18 volts. It comes with a 12 volt adapter, but this means I can run it from uh, my solar power system. So this unit came from gearbest.com and I will put a link to this item in the description. Okay, let's take a look inside. And we have an instruction manual. Now this is quite a thick instruction manual and it's all in English. So there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, battery charger, it's pretty big. I'll put it side by side with the um, power X in a minute. But let's just get that out and take a quick look. Yeah, that's uh, quite substantial. Um, nice to see a proper UK plug in there and 12 volt power pack. Uh, so this is 60 watt, 15 volts at 4 amps. And uh, next to the PowerX C9000, it looks like this. So it's quite a chunky affair. So let's have a little look around the charger. Now this isn't meant as a full review. Uh, this is really just a Christmas gift idea. But let's look at uh, some of the things that stand out. Now these sliding uh, bars are often not very well impl implemented, but these are very, very chunky, have a really nice smooth movement. You can see they've been properly greased. So that feels pretty good. Uh, temperature sensors would be my guess, these metallic strips running around here. We've got four buttons uh, at the top with lights by the look of it and four buttons at the bottom. Uh, set up, select left and right and enter. On the back there is a couple of these pegs that come up just to tip the thing up a bit. There's a fan there and what else have we got? Ah yes, the all important 11 to 18 volt input center positive, that's good. So let's peel off the uh, screen protector. Now I've noticed that my 2.1 millimeter plug won't fit in this because that's actually a 2.5 millimeter pin. I think I might have an adapter somewhere. Let's have a look. Yes, I think this uh, little short lead is a 2.1 to 2.5 adapter and with a barrel connector on here, I think that should work. So let's plug in and power up. Now the first thing you get is the user interface mode, dummy mode, just for nickel metal hydride and lithium ion, simple mode or advanced mode. Well, let's go into dummy mode because I really don't know what I'm doing at the moment. And uh, no batteries in there. Well, let's stick a selection of batteries in there. Uh, so I've got a selection of cells here. I've got um, a through night lithium protected cell. You can see it's a bit longer than the unprotected cell, which is just marked ultra fire, no idea what that might be. And I've got a couple of Eneloop uh, nickel metal hydrides here. So let's just put these in, in this dummy mode, uh, positive to the top, yes, and just see what it makes of it. Now I need to turn on the display. 
That's a bit bright for the camera, so I'm going to move the camera down so that it can see it. Um, yeah, so that's showing, I'll turn the light off so I don't get that reflection on the screen. That's showing a lithium ion, 3.72 volts. Let's put the through night one in. That's also showing as a lithium ion. Looks like I'm getting an option to change the current if I want to. Uh, that then times out and away it goes charging. Let's put an end loop in the third one. So that's coming up as 1.35 nickel metal hydride. And I'll put the other end loop in which is pretty much the same. Also showing as a nickel metal hydride. So certainly in dummy mode it seems to be very easy. You just shove the cell in, it tells you the voltage, the current, and away it goes. That's rather good. Now if I press a slot button, it looks like I can change the current, even in dummy mode. Okay, I'm now in advanced mode. Let's put a battery in, it's just an inner loop. Now it seems in advanced mode that you have to set up your own programs. Ooh, uh, that is pretty advanced. So I press the slot button, and now that gives me all this stuff. Oh, program number 01. Uh, enter is it? Yeah, battery type. No, I want to do that. Lithium ion, LIFE, nickel metal hydride. Well, it's got inner loop separate to nickel metal hydride. Let's take inner loop for the moment because I've got an inner loop in there. Enter. I want to charge it. Uh, enter. Standard AA, charge current. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, I see what's happening. There's lots of different types. Pro XXAAA, standard AAA, standard AA, standard DC, plus type AA, light AAA. Wow, there's lots of types. So standard AA I want, so we'll go 1.2 amps. Charge current 1.2 amps, let's leave that alone. What else have we got? Discharge current, nothing. Uh, charge resting. Discharge resting, cycle count, cycle mode, target voltage. Well, I'll trust them on that. Delta peak, 3 millivolts. That's quite tight, isn't it? Trickle charge. We won't have a trickle charge. Restart volt. I presume that means if the cell drops below a certain voltage, it charges it again. Uh, De-reduce. Well, there's so much stuff in here. It's unbelievable. Okay, save to 01. Now, can I name it? What is that doing? Right, so I'm saving this to program 01. Press and hold enter. Uh, so voltage is 1.38. Current is coming up to 1.2 amps. And yes, this is telling me the milliamp power. So that's counting up. I think if I press down, I get a graph mode. Hmm. And uh, in this what they call diagram drawing view mode, DDV mode. It looks like it's stepping up uh, for every uh, what's that, 10 millivolts. Quite big step. So I imagine this graph will resize itself after it's been running for a while. Let's uh, see what happens. And uh, so yes, it's been running for just over four minutes and the graph keeps rescaling itself uh, to fit everything on the display. It's currently at 1.52 volts. After a while the graph view just flips back to the uh, standard front screen view. I should probably give it its proper name because there's a, a diagram here. You've got uh, total overview, TOV, slot operation view, slot programming view, global setup view and diagram drawing view. Pretty good stuff. Now, I've got to play with the app for this thing, so here it is. Finally, your charger gets its own app. Let's open that and see what happens. Hmm, this could be a problem. The app starts up, then quits and says, Your phone does not support Bluetooth 4. Now, it's taken a few hours to negotiate the use of my wife's Nexus 4 phone, uh, the same phone that I'm using to film. This does support Bluetooth 4, so I can run the app. So let's quickly go through the charging of this lithium cell. 
Now I can't use program one because program one is in a loop. And in fact, if you try and do that, let's go back, info message. It just says check voltage. And it's very useful that this has that facility to uh, not apply the wrong program. It probably would be better if it just didn't do it. But uh, anyway, let's um, come back out. We need to go to program two, lithium ion. Press and hold to enter that. And now I can start program pro uh, charging. And while this thing is charging, the app bursts into life. Now I thought this green thing would be some sort of useful estimate of a state of charge indicator, but it's really not. It's just a stupid filling up, constantly filling up thing. In fact, all it's saying is that the battery is being programmed. That's really disappointing. What's a bit more useful is the data that's on the screen. Uh, we've got the total energy that's gone in or charge that's gone in in milliamp hours. Uh, we've got the voltage, the current, the elapsed time and the temperature of that particular cell. That's all good stuff. Now I can also use the app to stop charging. We've got first slot stop, second slot stop. You can stop the individual slots or you can stop all slots. So I can do that. That command gets sent through to the charger and the charger stops charging. Um, but you've also got the ability to set up these uh, user programs. But this is where everything goes a bit wrong because these programs don't harmonize with these programs. And if you create programs in here, the advantage with the app is that you can name them. You don't seem to be able to name these programs. They're just numbered. And that's a real nuisance. But there's no sort of cross connection. It all goes very wrong at this point. Now, just to give you a little example, I've set up a program called Nickel Metal Hydride, NIM there. If I press that and say start, this thing says check voltage because obviously settings for Nickel Metal Hydride are not appropriate for this lithium ion cell. But if I take a look at here, it's still saying that it's got program two and it actually hasn't. What's in here now is the nickel metal hydride program. So this is very confusing. If I try and start it from here, program two is a perfectly valid program, but it won't run because it's actually been overwritten by what the app sent in. If I go to slot one and look at it, it's a lithium ion program, and now come back out of that, it now will start charging and everything's back good again but this is very confusing arrangement. Now this could be a really good setup. You can understand that there are severe limitations in the user interface here because you've got a 128 by 64 screen. You've got eight buttons. Um, it would be nice if you could name the programs, even if it was via some horrible increment decrement letter thing, but you can't name the program. So you have to keep a written list. Now on the phone, you've got color, you've got keyboard that you can key in program names but it doesn't interact with the charger. It's just very badly uh, implemented. Now there's also a third option, which is a, a Windows application, which you can download and connect Windows to here through this uh, simple USB uh, connection. It's called PC Link. And that should be even better because you've got the huge screen space of a PC monitor, keyboard and mouse, but it's even worse. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a very competent charger. I've read some reviews, I've watched some YouTube videos on this. It's very accurate. Um, it can charge at a high current per slot, three amps, which is pretty good. And the user interface is tolerable as a standalone device. But what could have been so good, the app and the Windows application, really aren't very good at all. It almost makes me think that the team who built this and wrote the firmware put the app uh, software writing out to a different person, maybe even in a different country, because it's just so disconnected with this unit. And the Windows application, again, just doesn't bear any relation to what's going on here. It, it kind of connects, but it's very strange. So this battery charger is crying out for a review. In fact, it's probably gonna have to be several reviews 
because there's so much to say about it and the app and the Windows application. Um, as a standalone, it's pretty good. It's kept me amused uh, for many hours today. Um, I mean, I've enjoyed that, but a lot of what I've discovered has frustrated me. It's enjoying and enjoy uh, enjoyable, but frustrating at the same time. Now, just one final thing to say about this. This has upgradable firmware. If you connect the uh, USB to the computer, one thing the Windows application does do is allows you to upgrade firmware. So all of the problems with this are fixable because the firmware can be upgraded in this, the app can obviously be uh, upgraded, and the Windows application can be upgraded. So I think this charger is going to be very good, but at the moment it does have a few issues. Merry Christmas!